You know what is wild? I've made over 250,000 just by sending this one line of code. This one right here into the void no visible alerts no pop-ups until one day or one week or even sometimes months later someone on the other end opens the wrong thing and bam that is when i get paid this is the world of blinding success a strange and beautiful flavor of vulnerability hunting that's made me more money than i've ever expected so if you're into bug bounties security red teaming or just tech curious i promise you this video is for you in this video what i'm going to do is i'll break down what is blinding success I have built a repeatable process to find it and a few things I have learned chasing these four to five figure payloads through my just computer and just looking at all the bug bounty programs that are out there. So stick around and let me show you how this little one line of code has made me a massive impact in a ton of bounties. So what exactly is blind XSS? If you already know the basics, hang tight. This will be quick, but it's important for context. Blind XSS is just very much the same as a regular cross-site scripting. You inject JavaScript into a web app in a way that it gets executed in someone else's browser. But the key difference that is that you don't see it happen. There's no alert. There's no visible effect. Nothing fires in your browser. Instead, the payload sits there quietly, maybe in a support ticket, maybe in a log entry, a feedback form, just waiting for someone like an employee to open it. That's why it's called blind. You launch the payload and you're totally in the dark until it hits. And when it does hit, it can fire in internal panels, in admin views, moderation tools, the kind of places with massive privileged access. But before we jump in, I gotta quickly give a shout out to our sponsor, Bug Crowd. If you're into hacking, bug bounty hunting, or just leveling up your security skills, Bug Crowd's got you covered. They have built a platform where you can earn cash, learn from top hackers, and be a part of a solid community that's all about sharing knowledge and finding bugs that actually matter. The Level Up series is packed with hands-on content to help you grow your skills faster. It includes everything from interviews, how to audit calls all curated to help you get better and faster if that sounds like your vibe head over to buckcrowd.com slash hackers and check it out for yourself and honestly this is why i love blind xss it's subtle it's powerful and most importantly it is overlooked now I've spent the last few years obsessing over this bug class, and I've learned a lot, not just by finding blind XSS, but about thinking like the developers who accidentally made it possible. In this video, I'm going to share the biggest lessons I've learned that has helped me earn over $250,000 with blind XSS. And hey, if you want to go deeper, I put together a small course with walkthroughs, with my entire blind XSS methodology from beginner to advanced. It covers your how to set up a blind XSS tracking dashboard. It covers how to build a stealthy payload that reports back reliably. And of course, like I mentioned, my entire methodology is in there. If you want to enroll, just hit that link right here, or I'll just pin it in the comments down below. Also, if you'd like to see a free setup video for the dashboard and a notification system that I use, drop a comment with the word setup. If enough of you guys ask and want it, I'll make sure to make it happen for all of you. All right, let's jump into the video. Lesson one, and the most important thing to do is to stop using alert one when you are testing for XSS. Seriously, just let it go. We're done with it. Instead, you want to use an import, something like a JavaScript payload that says on error equals import, and you point it to your web server. And let me explain why that is. Well, first of all, it lets you track all of your valid XSS. If you do an alert one, the bug might fire somewhere and you might be able to report it. Cool, but that doesn't leave room to escalate to blind XSS. With import, you get a hit on your server, you know when it fired, where it fired, and even what the context that it was in. That is huge, especially for blind XSS. Plus, you can build Build an archive of all of your XSS findings. And honestly, even if something doesn't lead up to blind XSS right now, you can retest it later. And sometimes that later is when the real money shows up. So keep that in mind. No more doing alerts. Do an import. But there's also another reason. Blind XSS is called blind for a reason. You have no idea when or where that payload that you have put in will execute. It might sit there for days weeks or even months until some internal tool, some admin panel, even log viewer finally loads it. If you use an alert one, you would never know it fired, but with an import, it pings home quietly and reliably. That gives you visibility, even if it's a delayed trigger. So starting today, ditch that alert one, use import and track your payloads because sometimes the bug doesn't fire today, but the bounty still does. That's a number two that I want you to learn from this video is just because it doesn't fire for you doesn't mean it won't fire later. Here's the thing. With blind XSS, because your payload doesn't fire on your end doesn't mean that it won't fire somewhere else. 
So don't get discouraged. Just because you didn't get a ping back right away, it doesn't necessarily mean the bug is dead. It just hasn't found the right victim yet. A single piece of user input like your name, email, or bio can get passed around and rendered in a ton of different systems. For example, let's say you're using a platform to buy your favorite game, your favorite skin. Your first name or your bio might show up in the dev dashboard for game publishers. It may show up in the customer support panels. It may show up in internal feedback tools, shopping cart logs, or even order fulfillment systems, or even go as far as the marketing or analytics dashboards. Those are just a bunch of different places your payload could hit that I can just think about as I'm creating this video, all from one piece of input. And the crazy part is that most of those systems don't even exist in the public scope. You will never see them. You can't crawl them, but they are real and your payload is just waiting there. So if you don't get a ping back today, if that vulnerability doesn't look like it exists in the UI that you're using, don't trash it. Just wait, track it, archive it, revisit it, because sometimes blinding success shows up later, but when it does, it does pay a massive payout. Lesson three, sometimes you have to help them trigger it. So your payload's out there, sitting in a forum, in a field, in the dark corner of the internet just waiting. But what if it never gets viewed? Well, sometimes you have to give it a little push. One of the biggest lessons I've learned is this. Sometimes you have to do something weird to help your payload actually get processed. That might mean putting it somewhere that's tied to a human workflow, like your support teams, a refund review, or even an order verification system. And I know what you're thinking. The obvious one is always the contact forms and the support tickets, especially custom built portals, not third party tools like Zendesk. But I got to give you a quick important note here please, and I'm begging you, please, please, please don't spam real support systems with payload. Don't be that person. But beyond that, get creative. You could request a refund on an order, open multiple orders, then cancel them, change the last number of your credit card to something random so it goes into a manual processing step. You can even go as far as asking for an update on something you have, you have purchased. Maybe say my package never arrived. Submit weird feedback in places no one else checks, but still exists. Basically anything that kicks off a manual review or involves human investigating and landing somewhere right on your payload. One of my favorite old school tricks was that I love doing is to put my XSS payload into the second line of my shipping address. Then when the order was shipped, I'll send an email and go, hey, can I get an update on this? It looks like my package was never delivered or I've never received it. This alone worked more often than you think. And I know what some of you guys are thinking, is this social engineering? Well, maybe a little bit, but the vulnerability isn't caused by the social interaction. It's caused by the fact that they are reflecting untrusted input into the internal system. Still, be thoughtful, use this kind of tactics ethically and always stay with in program scope. And here's the kicker. I've had the same exact blind XSS payload fire twice. Once it was in the support system, and then again later in the fulfillment dashboard because they were manually reviewing some orders in a specific region and maybe looking at the feedback, for example. So one payload, two triggers, two different internal systems. That's what makes blind XSS so fun and interesting to take a look at. And lesson number four, if one payload fires, look for more entry points. Okay, so let's just say that you're Payload fired. Nice. Great job. You got the webhook ping, maybe even a bounty, but I wouldn't stop there necessarily. The moment a blind access triggers, you're not just seeing the bug. You're seeing a part of the internal world and those applications that you will never get access to. And that visibility is incredibly valuable. You will see things like the URL maybe sometimes, what data was on the page, what context your payload was executed in, who viewed it, and what fields they interacted with. Use that knowledge. Because sometimes that one page is just a slice of a bigger internal workflow. Maybe you see the ticket number in the URL. Maybe there's a second tab that says customer activity. Maybe another part of your profile is rendering in a script tag, for example, where you didn't think about executing an alert or an import in there. This is where the fun starts. Use each plan XSS as a learning lesson. And this is one of the areas that I really dig into in my course. You're not just watching payloads fire. You're seeing what information they see, where that data comes from, what systems are involved, and what else you can now explore. I even show you full walkthroughs with screenshots of triggered payloads, the source code of the page that it landed on, and how I use that information to identify and follow up exploits in other workflows. Remember this, every blind XSS is a window. Look through it and ask yourself, what else can I reach from here? Because finding one bug is great, but chaining that into two, three, or even four findings, that's how you go from bounty hunter to a problem solver. That's it for now. 
just a handful of the biggest lessons I've learned chasing blinding success over the last few years. If you found this video helpful, do me a favor, drop a like, leave a comment, or share your favorite tricks down below. And hey, if you want to go even deeper, check out that course. It's pinned in the comments. And that's it. I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.